Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at ChatGPT5 and see how to go ahead and basically use this new version of software. Now, what ChatGPT is, it's basically the, it's kind of like a chatbot with a lot of information behind it. So there is a lot of capability, a lot of features to kind of have within it. And this new GPT-5 is their latest model. So behind ChatGPT, their models that they use are called GPT, which are basically their main models. So this new one is called GPT-5, and there are a lot of features built inside of it. But number one, the first way to go and get into ChatGPT is by going into chatgpt.com, where you can just Google ChatGPT and it will basically come up. It's very popular. The layout of this website is basically like this. On the left-hand side, you'll basically have your original prompts. So you can go through and you'll have a little open AI logo in the top left. You'll have this little sidebar icon, which will allow you to close the sidebar, or you can go through and just tap onto the sidebar again and it will open it. So if it's closed, just tap onto the sidebar, it'll open it up. You'll have this new chat option, which you can go ahead and bring up new chats. You can search your previous chats. If you have any chats that you've previously had, you can go through and basically open them up. If you want to access the library, so you can go ahead and visualize anything, you can find it here. ChatGPT turns any idea into an image, you can go and jump into your library. If you want to open up Sora, which is a video generation you know, option, you can jump right into Sora and you can go ahead and bring it up here and you can start making videos. But that's only if you click here. Under GPTs, you'll basically be able to go ahead and get kind of like this plugin, plugin lifestyle thing. You'll have a lot of different plugins and packages you can install right within ChatGPT. So you can jump right into here and you can see which ones you like. And if there's a particular one that you like the most, you can go and just kind of jump into it and then you can kind of go on from there. Now, under chats, you'll see all your previous chats that you've created. So you'll have a bunch of different chats right down here. And then you'll have your account down here, which if you click on it, it will allow you to see your email that's associated, your plan if you want to upgrade it. You can customize ChatGPT5, your settings, help, and you can log out as well. If you actually go into customize ChatGPT, you can go ahead and actually describe to ChatGPT5 exactly what you are and who you are. So I'd actually probably recommend you to do this. Just go ahead and type in what ChatGPT should call you what you do for a career. You can say what type of personality you should basically have. So if you want it to be more happy, if you want it to be more straight shooting, encouraging, Gen Z, whatever these things are, you can go and describe the traits. And then you can also let it know anything else this should know about you. So any interest, values, or preferences to keep in mind, that way ChatGPT will basically go through and be able to kind of you know, create a customized ChatGPT experience specifically for you. So. That is basically how to do that. Click on the X button up here. And if you want to jump right into ChatGPT5, you can click on the new chat option in the top left, go and tap into here. And now you are back in GPT5. Now this middle box right here is basically how to interact with ChatGPT. So you have a plus button right here on the left side. This plus button, if you click on it, allows you to kind of bring in more capability inside of GPT. So you can go ahead and add photos and files right inside of GPT-5. You can tap onto this add photos and files option, and that will go ahead and bring in photos and videos right inside of this page, and it will allow you to upload those things. If you want to study and learn, this is a new feature that was just added. It can go through and kind of help you with your homework, explain the topic to you, or create a practice quiz this is something that's actually really cool because it allows you to do more than just get the answer. It allows you to basically study it. And you'll notice as you click on the plus buttons, it will start to kind of populate these little toggles at the bottom. You can always go through and exit these toggles if you don't want those particular features anymore. If we click back on the plus button, you can jump right into creating images. If you tap on creating images, again, it adds that little toggle at the bottom and it allows you to kind of see all these different types of searches at the very bottom right here. And you can even click on styles of this button and you can change the style that you want. You can go from cyberpunk to anime to photo shoot, all these different types of styles automatically, which is actually really awesome. Clicking on the X button here again, 
and then clicking on the plus button, you'll see think longer. This is also another cool feature which allows us to go through and allows GPT-5 to think longer before it goes through and actually responds back to us. So that is something that could be really important for you because you might not want the answer right away. You might want it in a little bit of time and you might want GPT-5 to be able to think on the answer longer and not focus on speed, but rather focus on the content and the, you know, the, you know, like the, how accurate the information is basically. So you can click on the X button here and then you have deep research, which is basically like think longer, but way better. What OpenAI says is that GPT-5 is like having a PhD right in your pocket for any task or any topic. So you can go ahead and again, ask it to research these topics for you. And that is again, PhD level research right inside of here, which is amazing. Now we can click on the plus button and then we can go through and go under more and you can actually connect GPT-5 within a web search or canvas, or you can connect it right within Google Drive, connect it to OneDrive, or connect it right into SharePoint. This allows you to connect your GPT options right inside of your environment, which is genuinely very awesome. You also have this microphone option if you wanna talk right into or dictate right into GPT-5, and you also have voice mode, which is actually a really, really cool thing, and it basically allows you to kind of have a voice mode option right inside of GPT-5, which is awesome. You also have an upgrade button right here, which allows you to upgrade your GPT model. In the top left, you have ChatGPT options, which only really allow you to go through and either upgrade to ChatGPT Plus or standard GPT. There's not really a way to change our models anymore, unfortunately, but unless you have the more premium option, the free option, you either have GPT-5 for a limited time, and then you jump down to GPT Mini. Now, if you wanna turn on like a temporary chat or a chat that just doesn't have anything going on within or anything like that, like uh, doesn't remember what you're doing, like incognito mode, you can go through, click on here, and it will automatically go through and turn on a temporary chat where memory is off, there's no model training, and it's not in your history. So you can click on continue, and then you'll jump right into temporary chat, or you can tap right back in the top right corner, and it'll bring you right inside of GPT-5. Now, GPT-5 brings a lot of new features specifically focused on coding, health, and a lot of other things. So you can ask ChatGPT anything. You can ask it normal questions like, what is the normal health of a you know 40-year-old person, right? So you can go ahead and kind of ask it more health-related questions, and it will kind of give you better responses. So you can use it kind of like a Google you know, search bar, but instead of going through websites and trying to find it, it will actually go through and try to give you like actually good information without having to search through 10 different websites. Uh, GPT-5 also excels in coding as well. So now you can go through and ask it way more coding related questions. I can ask it, code me a game like Flappy Birds uh, with a ball instead of a bird, right? So I can go ahead and ask it questions like this and it will actually give you a much better, more thorough response. So here it's going to go through and actually give me this type of code that I can go ahead and run. Now, I have coded a bunch within ChatGPT and it's always given me issues. So, but it's also given me a lot of success as well, I'm not gonna lie. I would say like 90% of it's been really good. So if this even makes it a little bit better of an improvement, that is definitely going to be a much better experience here as well. So those are some newer kind of things within GPT-5, which you know GPT-5 is, is gonna excel at. It's also going to be much faster, much better in terms of just overall improvements. And especially with coding tasks and more research specific tasks, ChatGPT now is going to be giving you a much better experience. But it does seem like OpenAI is trying to go through and push a lot more people into kind of paying for ChatGPT so we'll see kind of how that goes, you know, in terms of people wanting to upgrade or not wanting to upgrade. But I will still say for the most part, GPT-5 is a big upgrade. And for the most part, if you're familiar with using OpenAI tools in general, like ChatGPT, you know, GPT-5 is probably not going to be too big of a learning jump for you. I think you're going to have a really good time with it. It's just, you know, you're going to have to just jump into it and kind of start using it. That's kind of the only thing that I would recommend. So make your way over to chatgpt.com, start kind of utilizing it, start kind of looking around, 
There's a lot of cool stuff here that you can definitely use. And I would highly recommend you to just jump into it, have some fun, and you know, let me know in the comment section below kind of how what your experience is with it so far. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that'll mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.